What is up, it's your boy Johnny Shree Vibes, Beating Phones and Telic. It is, we're back at the Dragon's Lair here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So we're gonna smash a good back workout together. Um, this is gonna be part of my training as well too, so you guys are gonna get a look of what I'm doing for my prep uh, for back. And then I'm gonna bring my boy along here and let him see how to train like an IFBB pro <laughs> who's competing at the Masters Olympia. Yeah. Just trying to make it spicy. Either yep. way, guys keep your eyes glued to the screen, your ears glued to the speakers, and let's watch some really good back training. And we're gonna start off with some uh, vertical pulls. We're using the D handles. Give ourselves a little more range of motion when we're on our way down so we can naturally get ourselves to the side here instead of using like a fixed bar. And we're gonna focus on getting a really good stretch at the top, a good squeeze of the bottom, and then a ride to the top. We're gonna do like 10 to 20 reps. Uh, work up to a working set and then that'll be that. So here we go. First set, it's gonna like wake things up a bit. Going through your first set, always you're just practicing your range of motion, the tempo, and then when you add your weight and you work your working set, none of that changes. So this is the part you're basically in a dress rehearsal. You're preparing yourself mentally, physically, to make sure you're consistent with your reps. We're gonna work up to our Working weight. The reason why I want you to keep your hands in like, you know, like a, a supinated, neutral position. When we're supinated or when we externally rotate, I made this comment before, your teres is involved with that. So once you're here already in that load, you're already loading the position without even moving, which is great. So I like being supinated so we can really feel it right away, target right away, and that's why people need help. I'm getting wider there. So Remember when you're lifting, on the way down when the scaps are open, and we're gonna be first and then second. And then on the way up, this goes out first, and then this comes out after. Right, so last come down, and then arm, and then going out, arm, then last. So don't let your, don't let this come out and then go up. One more working set. Very crucial, you guys. I don't know if you guys think about too much what I do. When I set up in here, I get myself locked in, right? So this weight's obviously gonna be pushing me, pulling me up. So when I get inside, this thing's low enough, so when I get in, I'm either like this or like this, but either way, I'm locking in, and then I'm driving my toes up into the pad to give me more support. That if I don't have myself here, I'm just gonna fall backwards, right? So I'm gonna be locked in here, so when I'm engaged through my feet, and in my core, I'm solid right here. Right, in a good position to be from here to here. And that's a good enough lean, you don't gotta be back like this. Right, we kinda wanna mimic a pull up with a bar. Cause you would start here and then to get to the top, you'd have to pull and come up. Right, so the shoulders have to do, do this. If you don't have straps and you're in your set and you're feeling your grip blues, like break, don't try to finish your reps with like this weird little monkey grip, right? Just kind of stop for a quick second, readjust, grip again, and start again, right? And finish your rep. Oh, hey, jeez, burns, man. You gotta be, you gotta be willing to, to just be uncomfortable in that elastic guys state and not let it, you know, be what deters you from continuing. That's when the reps are really good, right? I know we heard about like those last two reps, the ones that mean the most. All the reps mean the most. So we get that nice burning sensation. It's just a lactic acid building up from you really targeting the muscle. Better benefit for you. The longer you're in that state, the more growth you'll get in that, in that muscle group.
slow, stretch, all the way, all the way, finish. Oh, good. And that's what your reps should finish like. I make this point, I'm gonna make it more often because I see my clients do it. And I, I deter them not to, but I see a lot of people do it. They have this really good set. The reps are great. The last rep, they just, blah. Finish it off, just like you started. Finish your rep, boom, down, ride it out, ride it out, put it away. Same with your leg extensions, bicep curls, squats, deadlifts. Make your last rep be your best rep, right? It's like your anchor and like relay. Your last, your last anchor has got to be the best. It's got to be fast to finish. So make that your last rep. Your last rep is going to basically put a staple on your entire set. If you finish it off shitty, it's all going to be in your mind now. Like, yeah. So be consistent putting your rep away. We're going to go with the uh, Matrix uh, chest supported seated row. Uh, we're going to just really emphasize a nice stretch, open the scaps up, op opening them up, then driving them back, squeeze opening them up and driving them back while keeping a good neutral spine still, right? Stable from here, and the back's just gonna round a little bit at the top, the scap is opening up. I can't reach it, so when I do grab the weight and I sit down, right now, there's already weight off of, uh, it's already lifting, I'm already engaged right away. So my end, my end rep, when I'm in that protracted position, there's still tension. My core's tight, your feet can be here, here, I don't go here, it just has to be in a stable position. And then open the scap up, letting the weight pull your scaps apart, but just still directing it, right? Tight your tight core, floor to core, let it open up, and then we're gonna pull back, out slow, and then up, up slow. And don't think about pulling your hands, pull with your elbows, right? Back. Think your lats like this shirt, right? So your lats are gonna finish like this, and it's gonna wrap like this. So we're like wrapping this, the, the teres and the, and the lats around your, your collarbone, it says, like it's wrapping around, and then it's gotta pull back, right? So instead of your scap staying like this, and then your arm is doing this, <laughs> right? <laughs> Real though, like it's serious. There's nothing wrong with being like this, all right? But we want it to be like this. I can even coach up a damn sweater. <laughs> so yeah, chest and uh, just the chest pad. You want to have it like right, like below, like right above your sternum, like right in the middle of your sternum. You don't want to sit in your soul flex here because you're gonna be like just gasping for air. You don't want a bunch of pressure sitting here. So you want the pad to be up here. So you have a good, you know, you're stable here. But we're also not inactive, right, or disengaged. You're not sitting here like just drooped over, you know, the pad. When I say protraction, I mean like, you know, I mean intentionally engaged and pushing away. Like I'm here, but I'm actually like, at the end of my set or my rep, I'm, I'm pushing away, right? I'm letting the weight pull me, but I'm still guiding it and pushing. And then I'm pulling back, but I'm not just kind of, because like, like if you look, even when I'm here, my chest is still engaged, even pulling, like, I'm being all the way protracted like this. So just make sure you're, you have it like here. You don't want to sit in here because you're just going to be like, just uh, the entire time. So we're going to put this up, basically go 10 minimum reps, and then we're going to go like a two IRL. Reps in reserve. Like I said, your first set, make sure you go to true failure. If you don't, know, if you don't go to true failure, then you can't be like, yeah, I did two reps in reserve. It's two reps in reserve to failure. Right? A seven RPE compared to failure, like technical failure. That pain intensity that you have at that, I can't do one more rep sensation, you're gonna do two reps before that. That's what RR is. But you can't do these things without actually reaching failure, right?
the scenes. Yo, can we just not do the set and say we did it? <laughs> I like working out too much. I'm gonna make a separate video on this, but it's, it's, it comes up way too often. You know, once a month, get some deep tissue done amongst all of your actual trainings, like your, you know, your own stretching, foam rolling, all those things. You gotta keep this thing, keep all your maintenance in your body. Not just, it's not just about training. Training your body is like, in, in, entails everything. Your nutrition, your sleep. Like that, like, massage therapy is part of your recovery. Stop telling me all this stuff, stop like, so I'm giving me like consults and be like, yeah, man, my body hurts. Like, what do I do, John? It's like, yo, I'm not, a, I'm not a physiotherapist. I'm here to prevent those things. But if those things are happening, I'm recommending, like I do myself, go see a massage therapist. Some more back stuff now. Yeah, so we're gonna grab the uh, traditional T-bar row. So basically targeting, you know, looking at like how many exercises we should do each muscle group. For back, you know, we're, we're looking at a vertical pull, horizontal pull, and then like a hinge pull. So we're getting, you know, carries, lats, then we're getting like lats, carries, rhomboids, traps, thicker parts, right? And then we're doing it again, we're getting like lats and then erectors. So we're doing traditional T-bar row. I made points already, like, you know, use a 25 because it gives you a lot, a lot more range of motion when you're doing a set, so you don't have these big 45s and you end up stopping here. Another thing too is if you don't have, if you have one of these things in your gym where you can clip on, these, this is pretty close from Prime, where you can actually like put their handles on here. I don't like using the D handle. Um, if you're stuck with that, then you're stuck with it. No big deal, right? Work with it. But if you have something where you can adjust and put like two D handles on, I meant like the V grip, but like the two D handles, you know what I mean? So it gives me a lot more range of motion from here. I'm, I'm not stuck like this. So the top of my lift, I'm gonna be, I can, end up here and not with my hand stuck in like this. So if you can, use the handle. Anyway, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go from here. Because it's longer, we're gonna start from a dead position in a sense. From here, then we're gonna sit back, rock up. Stop from here, then rock up. Gave myself a little more elevation so I can get a stretch from being at the bottom. So again, my back is gonna be a nice neutral. It's not gonna roll from here. So I'm being stabilized, basically my leverage from the floor to core, everything my foot's planted. I'm gonna feel a nice stretch in my hands, use my glutes and my erectors. They're gonna keep me in this active position while my lats and scaps and everything are pulling. Good like warm-up set, like a feeler set. Especially going into a different movement. Your body's in a, in, a, in a little bit of a different position. Give yourself a feeler set to feel or a feeder set. And then start your work set. So we're gonna do two, two hard sets here. My warm up was 20 reps. I'm gonna do this next second set, 10 to 20 reps. And I'm gonna add a, add a load, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna aim to 20. I'm probably gonna stop short of failure. Again, what's gonna fail first in this is probably your lower back. If you're a beginner or intermediate, you might find that a lot of reps, you might not fatigue here, you might start fatiguing in your back a bit, which is fine because you're sitting in a static position all the time. So as long as that rolling and coming in and out, you're fine. I just want to be strong like Johnny. Easy bar curls. I'm grabbing the inside grip for no other reason, but I like grabbing the inside grip. It's comfortable for me. I feel like I got a lot more control. Um, I get a little extra help from being a little more, I would say, adducted. My, you know, my stabilizers are a lot more firm in this position for me than being outside. And it almost like feels like I'm doing like the uh, bicep blaster. The bicep blaster kind of puts you in this position here. 
and I have my hands like this, does the same thing. So bring it from here, and my elbows are in front of me, my rep's gonna go from here, right down to here, and it's staying in front of my body. So like basically my elbows are, are being tucked in front of me because I have to grab closer. If I'm grabbing outside, then they kind of slip. So I like grabbing it for that reason. I feel like I can control a lot more. If your intentions are consistent, I would say, or like it's part of your plan and you have a real, you have an actual reason to why you're doing a certain thing, and it and it feels great and you can do the exercise properly, do whatever you want to do. You don't have to do what I do. I'm just giving you my point of view from what I've learned, education-wise, experience, coaching, being coached. So you know, just try some things out for yourself. It puts you in a great, you know, position that makes the actual set or exercise the best it could be for you. We're gonna go 10 plus reps. Anything after 10, we're just gonna stop short to failure. So my reps gonna stay from here. I'm letting that weight pull me naturally, pull me down, tighten my lats, everything, and then up to here and down. Chest up. There you go. Arm in front of you. Let it hang in front like that. Tuck it in your. There you go. From there. Nah, that's not happening. No? Nah. <laughs> you do that on purpose. You know what I mean? Let them know. Let them know you ain't Johnny. Yeah. You put, put me in my place or what? Yeah. <laughs> go grab the ten. <laughs> So when you watch me do these, my body positioning from the ground up, I look a little bit, and that's happened to Alex and some other people as well too. When they start doing it, it gets hard. The body wants to really help get the weight up. So start doing this thing, right? Because it makes it easier. Right? You're not exposing the biceps as much when you're leaning back. Right? We change the, the range, or I would say the, the, the load and where it's at, right? So being back here, Natural for our body is gonna help us oh, do this. So I wanna make sure that from floor to core, I'm in the same position I was when I was doing uh, T-bar row. I'm on hinge a little bit, and I'm here and tucked here, and nothing else moves. So when I'm pulling, again, that weight's gonna naturally pull my shoulders down and keep them that way the entire time. So when I pull, it's just to here. And everything looks like this, right? There's not this, there's not this, Everything stays here so I can make sure that everything stays in my bicep. That is it for the workout, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you guys give it a try, let me know in the comment section below. And guys, for coaching, johnnyshreve.com. Got my PPL push pull legs ebook right now. My nutrition book is coming out. I can't wait. So I have to be able for you guys to have one of the best nutrition, probably your last nutrition ebook you'll ever have. I promise you that. And guys, make sure you guys follow my man on Instagram at, at alex.argami. Alex.argami. Those are game. To you, it's eight games. Eight games. <laughs> anyway, hey guys, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Hey guys, send me your progress pics, your training pics, and your video clips that I repost for you guys. You know how it is. Iron Sharp Iron, progressive vote for load your life. In the meantime, you guys keep gym chasing. Peace. Hey.